So today I'm continuing to talk about Beethoven's fourth sonata, Opus 7, an E-flat major, which is one of my favorite Beethoven sonatas. Uh, this sonata is so unique in many aspects, I consider it to be the first time, at least in the piano world, when Beethoven really broke out of this mold of what the sonata was beforehand and pushed it into a completely new realm. With all the repeats taken, it's almost 30 minutes long. Uh, I'm including it in my program, which I'm entitling New Beginnings, and all of these pieces uh, by Beethoven, Bach, Prokofiev, and Chopin all represent something new for the composers, something that they had never tried before. And so uh, with this sonata, that is no exception. We have Allegro Molto con Brio, uh, very Allegro and uh, with brilliance. So this piece really moves. It has this constant eighth notes going on in a 6-8 time signature, so there's this perpetual motion going on through it, very forward moving, uh, very optimistic and hopeful and joyful, and quite virtuosic in certain sections. So we have this leaps, which are not easy. <laughs> And then later on, we have these very fast scale passages, as well as these ones over here, these chromatic scales. This arpeggiated sequence is definitely not one of the easiest things in the Beethoven sonatas. One thing that I find interesting about this piece in relation to other Beethoven sonatas particularly is its proportions. Beethoven typically has a very lengthy development section. However, in this case, he has an exposition which is roughly about two and a half minutes and he asks the performer to repeat this section. Now, this is a rather lengthy repeat, so when repeated, uh, I would make sure that I do a lot of different things dynamically in terms of phrasing, articulation perhaps, just to make it a little more interesting. Um, depending on the venue, I might even choose to forfeit this repeat altogether, much to the chagrin of the purists. And in regards to this development section, it's actually really rather short uh, for a Beethoven development. He usually likes to revel in these development sections where it goes to a minor key and really kind of get lost in the sort of sequences that appear there. So we really only have measure 137 and uh, beginning at 189, we're back at the recapitulation. And in terms of dynamics, uh, a lot of times the development will be a lot more tempestuous, a lot more tumultuous than the opening themes. However, we have a, a few measures of fortissimo, and really the rest of it is rather quiet. You, you have these accents, these forzandos, um, but you have this long section piano, decrescendoing pianissimo, another fortissimo, and then it's really quiet. So really the bulk of this movement, the thematic material, is really 
encapsulated within this opening exposition themes. Now, in keeping with the standard rules of the Sonata Allegro form, the recapitulation begins in the same key, and it really follows the same structure as the exposition, um, although he does switch the key centers of these following themes. However, not too much else is different. We've got the same octave passages. We have the same type of chromatic scales, just in a different key. Um, and we have the same arpeggiated sequence. Where it changes is where he adds a coda. At 310, 311, this would really be sort of the end of the piece if he wanted to put something without a coda here. We are in the home key of E flat, so he could really end it here if he wanted to, but he chooses to, of course, add in a coda. So we're at the end of this arpeggiated sequence right here. <laughs> ending. However, technically, you could have ended it there. He chooses to go into the coda. In the coda, he actually really doesn't provide much new material. He really takes some of the themes, weaves them in at the end, goes from a whisper to a fortissimo. And he's really playing a lot with the extremes here. Um, as he likes to do, you've got crescendo, forte, fortissimo, sforzandos within a fortissimo context, all of a sudden pianissimo, and just a very uh, big orchestral 2T ending. As I mentioned in my previous video on the second movement, he does sort of a similar thing um, with pianissimo. This was something unheard of before in the second movement, this fortissimo's right at the end of a very slow movement. So you, you see a lot of Beethoven's uh, future tendencies developing in this sonata that he carries on to his later works. Anyways, you guys, I hope you found this helpful and informative. Let me know if you have any questions, of course. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, you can always follow me on Patreon. I post a lot of exclusive videos there for patrons only. So thank you, guys. I will see you in the next video.